Hi everyone, my name is Moni. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today we're going to be showing you how to play a game that is currently on Kickstarter called Blueprints of Mad King Ludwig. Yes, this is a one to five player game designed by Ted Elspach and published by Bezier Games, who are helping sponsor this video. And in this game, players are going to be good architects by laying down the foundations for a new castle in the Bavarian Mountains. We have to do our blueprints first mm -hmm. before we can build, of course. That's right. This is a game for one to five players that plays in about 60 minutes, and it's actually a flip and write game that's based off of a game called The Castles of Madkin Ludwig. Mm -hmm. And so today, we're going to be showing you how to play it. But before we begin, we do have to mention that this is considered a prototype copy of the game, which means things are subject to change in the future. Now, if you are interested in this campaign, there's going to be a link in the description, which you can check out at your leisure. Lastly, if you like these kind of videos and you want to see more in the future, please consider subscribing. And with that, we are ready to begin. So if it please your attention to the set of the table, we're all set up here for a two player game of Blueprints of Mad King Ludwig. Yes. Welcome to the planning grounds mm -hmm. where we are going to be drawing out the blueprints for our castles. Yep. Now, just to kind of give you the lay of the land, each player is given their own sketch sheet. And this is where we are going to be drawing all of the rooms of our castle. Mm -hmm. We each start with a foyer, which is at the bottom here, in which we are actually going to color in before we start the game, because it's going to dictate the starting room type that you have. Right. And we also have our own score sheet that's going to be keeping track of all of our points, as well as our bonuses and rewards that we can spend. Mm -hmm. Now in the middle here, we have our market of room cards. And each round, each player is going to choose one of these cards to draw on their sheet. Mm -hmm. We also have King's Favor tokens that are going to be scoring parameters at the end of the game. We have bonus cards and we have royal decrees that if you are familiar with the original game, Castles of Mad King Ludwig, you'll know that these break the rules. Mm -hmm. Now, the game is played over the course of 10 rounds, and each round, the players will have the opportunity to draw at least one room onto their blueprints. Mm -hmm. At the start of the game, all players are going to choose what room type their foyer is going to be. So for me, I chose to make it a red music room. Mm -hmm. You can have some Baroque playing in here. <laughs> and I chose an outdoor room. And this is important because once you complete a room by connecting or removing all of its entrances, then you get a particular room reward, mm -hmm. depending on the type of room. Right. Now, the way that a round works is in turn order, players are going to be taking one of the cards from the market and drawing that specific room on their blueprint. Mm -hmm. So say, for example, it's my turn and I choose the billiards room. Mm -hmm. Now, each room card shows a room of a specific type. And mm -hmm. so in this game, there are seven main types of rooms and they have an icon to designate their room type. Mm -hmm. So, for example, my billiards room here is an activity room. Right. They're also going to be color coded and it's important because the different room types give you different rewards when completed. Right. In addition, each room is going to be of a specific size. So my billiards room is a size four. Mm -hmm. And this is important because at the end of the game, that's how many points you're going to score just for having that room in your blueprint. Mm -hmm. The room size also determines the player order for the next round. So the player who chooses the smallest room size in this round is going to get to go first next round. Mm -hmm. And lastly, some room cards will have a swan symbol. And so anytime you take a room card with a swan, that means you get to color in one of these swans in your uh, moat line here on mm -hmm. your score sheet. Right. Each player starts the game with the first swan already colored in. And so the significance of swans has to do with building a moat, which we'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. Now, since I took an activity room, I'm going to draw this room on my sheet using the red colored pencil here to show that it's an activity room. Mm -hmm. And when drawing the rooms on your sheet, you can orient the room any which way you'd like, but one of the entrances in your new room has to connect to at least one that's already in your castle. Yep. And if you'd like to, you can actually place it underneath your sheet and uh, actually trace it over the card to make it easier for you. And there you go. Now I have a billiards room. Mm -hmm. Now it's also important to note that at the start of the game, we only have a nine by nine grid to draw our rooms in. Over the course of the game, we'll have the opportunity to expand our grid to include this entire sheet. Sure. But in order for us to do that, we have to complete outdoor rooms, which we'll talk about in a second. And once I'm done drawing my room, then I would go ahead and place my room card face down so that we know what the size of the room was for determining turn order in the next round. Mm -hmm. Next play would proceed to me and I would do the exact same thing. I'd choose one of the three available cards, take that room and draw it onto my blueprint. Right. Now it's important to note that even though rooms have to be connected via an entrance, you can connect a wall to an entrance, mm -hmm. but the only thing is any entrances that are blocked cannot be completed, right. which means you won't get the room reward if you cannot complete the room. Now, as soon as you've connected all of the entrances in one room, that room is considered complete and you earn a reward. So the first thing that happens is you get to fill in the circle on the score sheet pertaining to the room type. 
And this is important because at the end of the game, certain room types will score you points for each room that you've completed. Mm -hmm. And they score you a different amount of points depending on the room type. Sure. So food rooms will score you four points per completed room, sleeping rooms will score you five, and so on and so forth. Now, most room rewards, except for the food rooms, can be saved for later. And so as soon as you use a reward, you just color in the flag above the filled in circle to indicate that you've used it. Mm -hmm. Now let's go ahead and talk about the room completion rewards, starting with the food rooms. Food rooms, when completed, earn you an extra turn. And so this is the only reward that you have to take the round that you earn it. Right. Now, when taking an extra turn, you wait for all players to take their turn first, and then you get to choose another card from the market to draw onto your sheet. Mm -hmm. Sleeping rooms allow you to move doors when drawing a new room. And so if I were to draw this kennel and I didn't like where the entrances were, I could move the entrance to a different orthogonal wall. Yep. Now you can't move entrances to curves or slants, but uh, moving an entrance might be very useful for when you're needing to put them in specific areas of your blueprint. Mm -hmm. Downstairs rooms are sort of unique because when drawing them on your blueprints, all downstairs rooms must be connected to each other. The first downstairs room can be connected to any room in your blueprint, but each additional downstairs room needs to be connected to another downstairs room. Mm -hmm. Now completing a downstairs room allows you to add a secret door. And you're basically drawing in an entrance in one of your rooms that didn't used to exist. Mm -hmm. Now this entrance can connect to another room or it can connect to an empty space. Now, if you have an empty space on your blueprint that is completely surrounded, that has an entrance to it, that is considered a courtyard. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the game, you're gonna score 10 points for every courtyard you have in your blueprint. And so you can use secret doors for this purpose. Mm -hmm. Living rooms allow you to remove a door on an existing room. So if you find yourself in a situation where you have a door that you just cannot close, this is a great option. Activity rooms allow you to choose a card from the reserve. Now at the end of the round, any cards that were not selected from the market are going to be placed into the reserve. Mm -hmm. And so when using this reward, instead of choosing a card from the market during your turn or during an extra turn, you can choose a card from the reserve. Right. So if you saw a card that went by earlier in an earlier round, you can always get it from there. Mm -hmm. Outdoor rooms allow you to expand your lot. And so at the start of the game, your drawing area is a nine by nine grid. But each time you complete an outdoor room, you can choose one of the flags and basically ignore that line. Right. So if I were to choose this left-hand line, then now my drawing space is expanded to the left. Right. And if I'm able to complete four outdoor rooms, then I have this entire page to draw on. Utility rooms allow players to draw two bonus cards from the draw deck. At the start of the game, you're gonna start with two of these, but you cannot score any of these until you've at least completed one utility room. Each completed utility room will allow you to score one of these bonus cards. And lastly, we have moats. Now, moats are not a type of room that you're going to find in the deck, mm -hmm. but rather, as soon as you filled in four swans on your score sheet, at any time on your turn, you're allowed to draw in a moat on your blueprint. Mm -hmm. Now, moats are a row or column of any length as long as it's within the confines of your blueprint mm -hmm. and as long as it's adjacent to a room in your castle. Right. Now, moats do not have to be connected to any entrances, but any entrances that are adjacent to a moat are automatically removed, which makes completing rooms easier. Mm -hmm. In addition, at the end of the game, you're going to score two points per room that is completely behind the moat mm -hmm. when looking at your castle from the outside. And as soon as you fill in your eighth swan, now you have the ability to build a second moat. Now, in addition to room completion rewards, we also have special rewards that are at the very top of your score sheet. And each player starts with one at the start of the game. Mm -hmm. And basically for each special reward you have, you're able to use it on either taking any one of the room completion rewards or filling in a swan. Right. You can gain additional special rewards by skipping a turn one time during the game mm -hmm. or every three times you go last in turn order during the round. Now at the start of the game, each player also drafts a Royal Decree card. And uh, these can be quite powerful because they kind of help you break the rules. Mm -hmm. So for example, my Royal Decree card allows me to unlock two different grid lines when I complete an outdoor room. Right. And my card says I win ties in the Royal Favor tokens. Mm -hmm. Now once everyone's taken their turn for the round, any remaining room cards in the market get discarded to the reserve. Mm -hmm. You draw new room cards for the new market depending on player count. And then you determine the new turn order based off of the last room size that was drawn. Mm -hmm. So in this case, because I have a smaller room compared to Monique, I would be going first in the next round. Mm -hmm. At the end of 10 rounds, then players go into final scoring. Players score points for each completed room depending on the room type. Outdoor rooms will score two points for each adjacent empty square and one point for each adjacent half square. Mm -hmm. You'll score two points for each room that are completely behind a moat. Mm -hmm. You'll score one bonus card for each completed utility room. 
10 points per courtyard, no matter the size. And you'll add up all of the room sizes in your room deck for all the rooms that you've built onto your blueprints and score points for them. Some Royal Decree cards can also score you points. And last but not least, all players will be competing for all four of the King's favor tiles. Mm -hmm. Whoever best achieved these different goals will get 15 points. The second player will get eight, third will get four, and the fourth player will get one point. And the game comes with a lot of these different King's Favor tokens. And so just as an example, we have here total size of activity rooms. Mm -hmm. We have rooms of size five, number of courtyards, and number of swans. Right. So these tokens are really going to impact your strategy when trying to make these decisions in the game. And at that point, tally up the scores, and whoever has the most points is the winner. And that's essentially how you play Blueprints of Mad King Ludwig. Mm -hmm. Now, we do have to note that there is a solo mode to the game, and there's also a way for you to play with double decree cards once you're familiar with it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have any questions about anything that you saw here today, please feel free to leave us a comment down below, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Now, this game is currently on Kickstarter, so if you are interested in the campaign, there will be a link in the description down below. Thank you all so much for watching the video. We hope it was helpful. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.